All right, today we're going to monitor a few things that your Roomba wants to share with you. The first step would be to get a communications cable to hook between the Roomba and your computer. So the first thing you want to do is get your cable. It's a USB to UART converter and plug it into your USB port and you'll hear a little prompt and it should start loading the driver. Now you can see what communications port has been assigned by going in and looking at the devices through the control panel. Go to your device manager Go over to your COM port, and boom, USB serial port is assigned to COM3. So remember that for your next step. So we can get rid of that. Now, hopefully you've already downloaded a program called TerraTerm, which is a free download off of the internet. So we can start that up and we want to connect uh, to a serial port and luckily we only have the one to pick from so we'll choose that one then we can move this a little bit we can make this terminal screen a little larger so we can read the ASCII text that's going to be pumped out of it we'll go over here to set up and set up our communications parameters and it's going to be COM3, yeah, we know that. We're going to be at 57600 baud, 8 bit, no parity, one stop bit. That's all good. Then we can also change the font size. I like to use bold. And a size of 14 is not bad. So we'll do that. Now we can test the communications between the Roomba and the computer by plugging in the connector that goes into the side of the Roomba. It's a mini DIN 7 pin connector. And if we plug it in, boom, we start getting data uh, that's coming out of the uh, serial port. And it's basically, since I've got a DC power supply plugged in to charge the battery, we're actually seeing the battery charge reports that come out once a second as long as you're charging your battery. And we can see by some of the data on here, we're at minute 22. We've got 15.2 volts going in. We're charging at about 1 amp. And right now we're at Celsius 19 degrees, which is not very hot, so we're doing good. But I might mention this is also a lithium battery we're charging, so it won't get very hot. Anyway, that's what we do to set this up. And then later I'll show you how to put the, the Roomba, this one happens to be a Disco 4210. I'll show you how to set that up so it can tell you what might be problematic inside of its operation. All right, here we go. We are getting ready to monitor the ASCII output <clears throat> from an R2 Roomba 4210, which is the basically the second generation of the Roomba. This is the Disco or Discovery.
and basically are set up here to monitor the test results from the built-in program thanks to iRobot engineers. We've got a communication cable that goes from the 7 pin mini den on the back of the Roomba over to a USB port in the PC and we're also running a terminal program called TerraTerm. Alright, we want to get the uh, Roomba into diagnostic mode or the built-in test mode and to do that we hold down the three buttons max, clean, and spot and then we press power button and listen for the uh, ascending and dis descending tones and then release everything and you're in, in the diagnostic mode and now I'll switch over to the computer and we'll see the rest of this alright so we've basically got the Roomba Discovery into the bits mode or the built-in test mode and the first test that comes up you can see it's going to be the LED test zero. I'm going to go backwards here so we can see. All right, test zero LEDs is now sitting and waiting, and it displays all the LEDs and their what colors they can be on the uh, user interface, which is the power, the spot, the clean, the max status LED and the dirt detect. Now we can sequence from one test to the next or from a higher number test back to a previous test by pushing either spot or clean. Now spot takes you all the way back to the beginning and clean will advance one test at a time as in right now we see factory test zero LEDs. Now if I press clean again we're now at factory test one the bumpers and the program is waiting for the user to press the left bumper. When you press it the spotlight lamp LED comes on and when you release you'll get a pass indication so the left bumper sensor is good. Now it's waiting for us to press the right bumper sensor. So we press that and the clean LED lights and when you release the bumper bingo we get another pass. Now if you want to you can go back to the bumper test again by pressing spot and then clean and then we can do this we can repeat the test again just for our own satisfaction now let's go to the next test which is the cliff test this first cliff that uh, we want to check is the left side so you can basically raise the left side of the room up and then put it back down and it'll basically pass the test and also it lights the spotlight on the left sensor. Now he's waiting for us to do the right side so I'll just raise up the right side and then boom a pass. Okay now we can step to the next test now we're doing a left front cliff and again you want to look for that spotlight to come on and he wasn't happy with the right side because I lifted it too quickly I think. Let's go back one. Okay. Cliffs left front. Good. Right front. Good. Okay. And we just continue going down the or going up each diagnostic test to see 
what's happening with the particular sensor or motor or whatever. You just keep stepping through. All right. Now we're doing wheel drop tests. We do the front wheel, the left drive wheel, and the wall. Okay, so hang on here. All right, let's see. One other thing I might mention that uh, I should have at the very beginning is on the internet there is a program. It's uh, not a program, I'm sorry. It's a document created by iRobot. It's a PDF document and it's the Roomba Series 400 service manual. And within that document it details all the procedures that are required to put the Roomba into the test mode and then what each test uh, does and then you'll be able to follow along between the document and this display from the uh, serial channel to help you understand what's going on and like test 5 we just stepped to this is your room confinement program or test and you'd have to hold up a uh, virtual wall and it'll light up for you and indicate whether the room confinement detector or the IR detector is working on the front bumper. Alright, I went to look in another room for a uh, virtual wall for the R2 series Roomba and I don't have one so I'm using a remote control handheld uh, Roomba remote control and if you push the uh, forward or left right arrow it will light the clean LED indicating that the IR sensor is working so now we can step on to the next test okay now we're looking at the battery test and the display indicates we're at 14.9 uh, volts 21 degrees Celsius so we're in good shape there voltage is good temperature is good so that's a good test now we got left wheel test is running and we can hold our hand over it to stall it and we're doing good there we can go to the right wheel and we can do a stall test by stopping it with our hand and that passed we press clean again now we're going to test the uh, encoders inside the wheels and you should see the spot and clean LEDs flash intermittently indicating it's protecting the revolutions of the wheel. And now we're at test 10 which is the stasis which is basically testing the front wheel of the Roomba. And this stasis is not working on this guy, so we've got a uh, probably dirty contacts on the micro switch that would have to be looked at because the stasis should be detecting the front wheel spinning, and you can I can hear it. It's not doing good, so the micro switch is probably uh, got dirty contacts or broken wire. And it's basically if the stasis, stasis test doesn't work, the Roomba will eventually complain that it doesn't think it's moving and will stop. Alright, now we got 
the main brush is running and we can again do a stall test now he doesn't like that brush current it's saying that there, we're using just over an amp 1.074 amps and it's expecting not to use more than 566 or a minimum of 208 so the 566 and the 208 are reversed on the display but that's basically what he's saying is that this motor is using too much current so it needs to be cleaned or replaced and then we're going to test the uh, dirt detect left and right sensors which are underneath the brushes Now we'll test the vacuum, and that's basically not a bad motor, it's, that's a good vacuum motor. And here we go with the side brush, and we will see if we can do a brush motor stall by stopping it. Boom, it worked. Alright, so the side brush is good. Now we've got to do the charging test. And he's waiting right now to see if I'm going to plug in a charger. So let's get the DC charger jack located. Let's plug in the power supply. And he's detecting the charger. And we basically got a pass on that. And he's not happy with the trickle charge. Because the maximum is 71 milliamps and we're detecting 78. So it's a, of course this is a lithium battery so it might have some effect there. External charges detected. And the phone's ringing. So hang on. Alright, I'm back. The phone just ringing away over there. Let's see. We can press clean again and step to test 20. These last tests here seem to all be basically self-running. It's nothing that uh, the user has to do. And when you press uh, the clean button one more time, it takes you through all the tests that you've done and giving you a history of pass or fail. So now you can go back and repeat the tests that failed or untested and see if you can figure out what might be wrong and I wish you luck there because sometimes it's easy sometimes it's difficult